Well, hi, everyone. <clears throat> I'm the director for Common Knowledge Trust, and we hold the birthing better skills, the skills that hundreds of families developed in the early 1970s to prepare our body for birth and the birth coaching skills that we can use in any birth. And here we are in March of 2020 talking about COVID-19. And why is that important? We're all terrified, really, to tell you the truth. I live in New Zealand, and as of yesterday, we are in total lockdown for the next four weeks. And I haven't been feeling well. So I've been assuming that I have COVID-19 because the symptoms are similar to those people who have had mild cases of it. The people who have had moderate cases are sick, much sicker than I am. So it first started with my having a need to sort of clear my throat. And then I just started to feel a bit poorly. But I have taken my own advice and the advice of the Chinese doctors, which is gargle several times a day with warm salt water and clean your nose out with salt water by sniffing it up. And I've been taking zinc and taking good care of myself. As a natural health practitioner, I sort of know how. And at the same time, we're all wondering, well, if we do catch it, are we going to be immune to this? And that's an important question. So in the description of this video, I've just posted from a recent article in the New York Times. Unfortunately, the link it has is a paywall, so you can't read the full article. However, I've also posted another link from newscientist.com, which talks about immunity. And it's something that I didn't fully understand at all. In fact, I grew up during the polio epidemics, and I was given a live polio vaccine when it first came out and contracted polio from that vaccine. And after that, they stopped creating live vaccines and started doing it with dead vac having dead polio as vaccines. So that was an important lesson to me, that vaccines are, you know, there is something. So what we want to know is if we develop a natural immunity. And what you'll discover when you read The New Scientist is that maybe, maybe not. There are some coronaviruses, of which this is one, in which we can get the flu every year. So we don't develop a lifetime immunity to it. Do we develop any immunity to this at all? Well, they're just doing research. I mean, the reality is, is the medical profession is totally blown out. They don't know what to do. And that is something that the medical profession likes to know. We want to fix things. So the only way that you really find out is through antibody tests. And those tests are, are being developed now. In fact, in China, they started to do antibody tests um, a few months into the Wuhan um, cluster, and then they started to give transfusions of blood, compatible blood, to those people who were critically ill. And there were some promising signs to that. And we just don't know at this point. So all I've done is basically to copy what I've read, because this is not my opinion. This is an opinion that's being written by journalists and well-known publications, and it's something that we need to look at because if we do develop an immunity to this, then that means that once we've been sick and I can't get tested here at the moment, and the tests take between a day and a week to get the results. So at the moment, I'm not going to wait a week before I do something for myself. And so one of the things that I want to share with you is uh, gargle with slightly warm water three to five times a day. And the Chinese doctors are also saying that zinc is really important, more so than vitamin C. I don't know why, and I am following that direction. One of the symptoms that I have had that others have talked about is feeling very dehydrated. My mouth is quite dry. So what the Chinese doctors are saying is 
three liters of warm oral rehydration. I make it eight ounces at a time, slightly salt, slightly sweet, and I drink one or two of those at a time until my mouth feels it's more moist. The other thing that they suggested is every 20 minutes or half hour, or hour, just take a sip of warm water, just freshen your mouth. I've also felt a sticky sweatiness periodically during the day. And the Chinese doctors are saying, take a shower at the end of the day and wash off. And that's really important. Um, I'm not quite certain about cleaning surfaces because it can be anywhere. So you clean one surface, it doesn't mean it's not somewhere else. Um, I've had a slight oppression of my chest and I became frightened. And so I did things to calm down. And that's important. And one of the things I actually did to calm down was I stopped being online and reading how scary things are. This is going to be scary. There are people who are going to die. However, I'm a 75 year old woman. And I know, because I was born after the Second World War, a lot of people died. A lot, 30,000 people died from suicide, from gun suicide in the United States. Up to 650,000 died from flu. The Syria crisis, the Ebola, Rwanda, the genocides around the world, the tsunami. People die. We're not going to stop people from dying from this. However, it's really important that we take care of ourselves. And you can start gargling with warm salt water now three to five times a day if you have a concern because this virus does collect in the back of the nose and the throat. It eventually works its way into the cells. However, if we could see the virus now as little red or blue dots, then we'd try to avoid it. And if it got into our system, we'd try to flush it out. That makes common sense. So there's no way to really necessarily prevent it. However, if we take these, do these simple actions, like the gargling, like the zinc, like cleaning out our nose, like taking a shower, then at least we're freshening our body and we're cleaning out the outside and the inside of our body. And it's really important to be drinking at least three liters of warm oral rehydration. And if you feel chilled, which I did, I got a hot water bottle. And if you don't have a hot water bottle, an electric blanket, do that. And if you don't have that, then fill up a glass jar with hot water, wrap a towel around it, and use that instead. Um, I've been sick for five days, and I don't know where I am in the cycle. Everybody seems to say that it takes about 10 days before you get better. And so I just want to, as the director of Common Knowledge Trust, to keep creating these videos and ask you to spread them around. <clears throat> you can subscribe to our YouTube channel if you know pregnant people. I mean, this is why Birthing Better existed, was we all wanted skills for the what if. And right now, the what if is in our face and there's still birthing women. And often now the hospitals are saying you can't have support people. If we have skills, we will cope and manage better. It's not about having a natural birth. It's about doing the activity of giving birth. So if you know pregnant women, tell them that they need to go online and to find skills-based methods. We're one of them birthing better, but we advocate any and all hypnobirthing, calm birth, birthing within, Lamaze, Bradley, Grantley, Dick Reed, any skills will help you if you are pregnant to go in and do this activity. And what does that mean? You just are going to cope and manage, deal with, handle, stay on top of and feel in control. It's absolutely, I've spent 50 years of my life advocating for a skilled birthing population to people, the natural birth movement and the home birth midwives just closing their eyes, putting their fingers in their ears and going, na 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 na. women should just choose to have a natural birth. But we just need to have skills to birth, however we birth our baby. So at this point, we're doing two things. One is advocating for self-health during this time. Do everything besides the preventative things. If you start to feel poorly, and just repeat after me, 
gargle with slightly warm salt water or you can use lemon juice or over-the-counter mouthwash or whatever keep yourself very very clean take a shower every day drink warming things drink warm oral rehydration you can use ginger zinc warm soups stay warm that helps your body cold drinks mean that your body has to heat that up so stay warm so anyway thanks for listening and pass this on um, once this goes to youtube it will be in our playlist and it's on facebook where you can find it share with other people we we can't have we we don't know how to stop people from feeling frightened we do know from my experience in working in third world countries that when we are skilled, we still feel fear, yet we feel better able to cope and manage. So if you're not feeling well, then you want to just do these simple things to take care of yourself. Will it stop you from getting sick? Who knows? May it stop you from getting sicker? Who knows? May it stop you from dying? Well, we sure hope it does stop you from getting sick or sicker, and we certainly do hope that, that you don't pass away from this. So just all join together, be kind to everybody you know, keep a physical distance, and get socially connected. That's the most important thing. So we have the suggestions on the previous videos of the list of to-do if you feel poorly, and on our playlist on YouTube, which is birthing better, childbirth preparation of all those things. But if you do know pregnant women, tell them, become skilled. They can learn at home with their partner, but they're the ones doing the birth. So have them be skilled so they cope better. Thanks so much. We'll do this again. Bye-bye.